In this next video, we are going to continue on with our subdivision design. From the previous video, we worked on our sanitary and our storm layout, along with the manholes, the pipe sizing, the pipe sloping, the catch basins, and whatnot. This video, we are going to move on to our pressurized water network. So this is a completely different set of instructions from the gravity drain. There's different tools. Most of this has to be accessed from the ribbon and we can have it aligned vertically with our profile. It makes things really slick as long as all the settings are set up properly. On the right hand side over here, I just have a 3D view set to 2D wireframe so we can see what's happening as we put the water pipe in, but we're not going to be accessing it through there. So with our water network, the first thing we want to do is load a program on our computer called Content Catalog Editor. When Civil 3D ships, it doesn't specify any cut lengths for pipes or anything. So we need to come into this Content Catalog Editor and modify our fittings or our pipe sizes, whatever we need to, to have the proper sizes for our water network. And this is including pipe cut lengths. So when you have the content catalog editor open, just click start and type content catalog. We're going to hit file open. And the drop down, the place to navigate would be C, program data, Autodesk, Civil 3D 2020, ENU, pressure pipe catalog. And if you're in any country that uses metric, go into the metric folder. If you're in one of the three countries in the world that use Imperial, go into the Imperial folder. Now we have a few different options here, ductile iron, PVC, steel, uh, not sure what PE is, but we can open the ones we want. Now we're going to use metric PVC for this, so I'm going to select metric PVC, I'm going to hit open. The table over here should populate. I'm immediately going to do a save as and name this metric PVC underscore COC because I don't want to destroy the default catalog, I want to modify this one for, say, the city of Calgary. So I'm going to hit save, and we'll see the file name up here change. Now when that is done, we can look at all the options that are built in here. So couplings, we have some couplings. We have elbows, 11 degree, 30, 45, 90 degree bends, short bends, long bends. We have fire hydrants built in. We have pipes built in and different sizes, 12 millimeters, 16 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 25 millimeters. So we can modify these and we're gonna be changing some of these to give us what we want. We have some reducers, we have some T's and we have some valves as well. So only come in here and change the ones you'll actually be using in real life. So we have a 200, we have a 250, the city of Calgary also uses a 300. So again, I'm just modifying this right in the table itself. 300, 300, and uh, the diameter inside, diameter outside will be different. So this will be based on the specifications of the pipe that you can say order. Now, the only ones I will be using at all are two, 200, 250, 300 for this exercise. And actually, we'll need 100 as well for our fire hydrants. So 100 millimeter pipe. 100, 100, 100. So make sure to change all of that. And then the most important thing is the cut length. So in this case, I'm using pipe that comes in 6 meter lengths. If this is not set up, then a bunch of the future commands that we will be using will not work. So come in here, modify this to your liking, what you need, uh, what your city specifies. Make sure we've changed everything. I'm not going to modify anything else, but you can get really detailed in here. So I'm going to save this, and I'm now going to close the content catalog editor. The first command I'm going to run in Civil 3D is set pressure network catalog. It should point to this folder already the C program data Autodesk 2020 pressure pipes catalog metric. And I'm going to choose my city of Calgary one. So metric underscore PVC underscore COC dot SQ light. And I'll hit OK. Under the settings tab, let's take a look at pressure network. 
parts list. We're going to build a brand new one because if it can't find the catalog, you're going to have issues. So once you modify that catalog, then go build a new parts list. So I'm going to create a brand new parts list. I'm going to name this water layout. And I know I already have one in here, but water layout COC. Under pressure pipes, I'm going to right click and add a material. I want to add a PVC. I want to right click, add a size. And then I'm going to select for my list. Now it doesn't look like I updated everywhere where it says numbers. So I have 200, 250. It still says 315, but the outer diameter is 300. So make sure to get every single, every single, um, place that says 200 or 250 or 300. So I'm going to choose my 110 because I made that a hundred. I'm going to choose 150 or sorry, 200 and we'll hit okay. No, I don't want to delete that. Add a pipe size. You know what we'll add? We don't have 150. We have 200. I don't remember which one was 200, but again, so just pay attention when you're building these. I'm going to go back into the content catalog editor and see if I can find where those numbers are. <clears throat> so if I expand pipes, oh, I think I know where I forgot to change it. So under 100 down here. We have to change 100 there, 100. Scroll over. I've got all these 100s now. 200, that's fine. 250 is fine. 300. And 400. All right, so I will again save this. And I'm going to go back into that water layout and edit this just to see, okay, this has picked up the new diameter, inner diameter, and outer diameter. So it has already picked it up and it's also picked up a cut length. Another important thing here is this allowable deflection. This comes into play when we have a curved road. We will not put a fitting after every six meters. However, within the city here, we are allowed a deflection on our water pipes where they'll put a rubber gasket or some kind of gasket in to allow us to deflect the pipe. So it almost appears as a curved pipe. The allowable deflection that I'm gonna use is five degrees. Although we only have straight roads here, so none of these will matter. So allowable deflection five, I'm just gonna come and set these all up. Again, setting things up from the get-go is easier than trying to fix it afterwards. Under the fittings drop-down, I want to add elbows. I want to add tees. I want to add a reducer and a coupling. Again, you don't need to add all these if you don't need them. PVC elbow. So under the PVC elbow, I'm going to right click add size. My bend angle, we have a 90 degree turn on bend on this. My diameter will be 200 by 200. I'm just gonna use 200 millimeter pipe. Knowing what you're gonna use as well will help you immensely. PVC T, I want a 200 T. Allowable deflection, five degrees. I think I forgot to put a deflection on the bend. So just edit it and add in the deflection. Coupling, this is more for when we have tangent sections connecting to curved sections. So I'm just going to select a 200 by 200 coupling with a deflection of 5 degrees. And then a reducer. I want, uh, and the one I want doesn't exist. It's a 100 by 200. So you would have to go into the reducer section in the contact content catalog editor and just add in the 100 by 200. So we're not going to worry about this one for now. So when Civil 3D says pressure pipes, those are the pipes themselves. Fittings will be your elbows, bends, tees, uh, elbows, tees, couplings, reducers, sorry. And then appurtenances are your fire hydrants and your valves. 
So underground water valves. I'm just gonna put in a gate valve. I'm gonna have one gate valve and I'm gonna choose just one hydrant. And again, whatever your jurisdiction requires, you would use that one. Under gate valve, I wanna add a size. This will be a 200 by 200 size. And I believe if we edit it, can we add a, no, we cannot add a deflection. And my above ground hydrant, I'm just gonna choose one hydrant, the 100 millimeter one and hit okay. So all this stuff needs to be set up before you even start drawing your uh, water pipes. It's gonna become increasingly difficult if things are not set up. So under pressure networks, I'm gonna create a pressure network by layout. I'm gonna name this my water network. I want to use my water layout COC. I want it to use my lock grading surface along with the main through road. And then I'm gonna use just the label styles I have, name only, name only, name only, and hit okay. Now we notice a toolbar doesn't pop up. However, everything is forced up into the ribbon for this. So for those of us that don't like to use ribbon, this is when we need to open it up. We can change things on the fly as we draw these in. So we have our lock grading surface, our alignment, uh, what parts list we're using. What is our water cover? So what do we require here? Is it 2.7, is it 2.9, is it three meters? Or do you live somewhere warm where you don't need it as deep? In this case, I'm going to draw everything three meters deep as Calgary's a cold climate and we wanna make sure everything's buried. The next option here, we have pipe sizes. So I'm gonna choose the pipe 200 millimeters. This is for drawing things. Do we want to draw pipes and bends or pipes only? And then my fittings. So the first fitting I'm going to draw will be a T and I'm gonna need a T right here. I'm gonna start here, go T, then we'll have a bend and then a cap essentially, but there are no caps in the metric catalog. And the appurtenances are gate valves. These get added in after. We can swap parts, break pipes, we can move things, we can slide them around, we can look at it in a panorama view. However, I'm just gonna start drawing pipes and bends. Draw pipes and bends. So I'm gonna draw it from here. And as we see over here, it's updating to that location. Now, because we specified a T, Civil 3D only lets us go to the right and it's not even applying that five degree deflection or to the north. I am going to come over here, but I'm gonna change this to a short bend. I'm gonna click right there. And that has not worked the way I wanted it to. There is no undo button here, so I'll hit escape. And I'm gonna erase this pipe. I'm gonna erase these labels. And what kind of, oh, it looked like it put the bend in there. Yeah, so that's what it did. I'm gonna erase these and start, just choose my T here, add pipes and bends. So I'm gonna go from here to here. Now, what, this is where I want the short bend. And it's gonna allow me to go north and I'm gonna to snap to here. So if I hit enter now, we should have a short bend here. So I'm gonna just delete these labels. Got a 90 degree bend. We have our pressure pipe. We have another fitting over here. For some reason, I put one there. And it didn't place a T in here. So these are still a bit finicky to use. However, I can simply go T, add a fitting. I want it right there, get rid of the labels. And it's as simple as selecting the grip, looking for the little circle with the four crosshairs glyph and attaching it to your T. And if the grips on your pipes go away, that is how you can confirm that it is attached to the fitting itself. We have no fitting here, it'd be tied into existing. Up here, there'd be a cap or we'd continue on into the more of a subdivision design. I'm going to draw a pipe only now and I want it to attach to here. And here's, we, we can see the five degree deflection. So it'll go five degrees to the right or the left. 
However, I'm going to snap to the end of this line and then hit escape. So if I click on this, it is also connected. So I just quickly drew in four water pipes with a couple fittings. Again, if we don't have exactly 90 degree corners, it's going to become a little more difficult because you're going to have to start messing with 11 degree bends, 22 degree bends, 45 degree bends, just to get the, the amount of bend that you want. We'll have four or five of these in a short row to match the, the bends we need. If we click on any of these pieces and go into uh, fitting properties, we can look at the connections and see if this is connected. In here, we can also change the deflection. It tells us the actual deflection, what the diameter is of the pipes. We can come into the pressure pipes, go into the properties, connections. The left side is open. Okay, I know that because that's where I started. The right up here will be open. This will also be termed as open because there's no cap on it. So when you go to analyze your network, just keep in mind you're going to have some open ends. And it's not necessarily a problem in the middle of the run. I want to add a hydrant as well. So I'm going to switch this to above ground hydrant. I'm going to add an appurtenance. And depending on the codes and standards, this will govern where you put your fire hydrants. I'm just going to place maybe two of them in. And I'm going to do it. We'll put it about there. And we'll put one here on this side. We're going to erase these labels. And now if we look at this, it comes in pointing to the east. However, you want the pipe connection pointing towards your water line. So from here, straight out. And the same with this one. And go, in, go into this, the settings and get the actual sizes. This is a 100 millimeter pipe coming off this fire hydrant. So I want to draw pipes only. And then this is where you'll need the additional T that's 200 by 200 by 100 to connect into your water line. So I'm going to just come in here and break this. And it snap to the end because it wants to close it. I want to disconnect from this part so I can modify it. And then connect it over there. So it doesn't want me to do it. So I'm going to, we'll just add a fitting. We'll add a T in there. Uh, we want pipes and bends. So from here to there. And now it's let me do it. Delete. But it hasn't added the actual T in because we don't. We won't be able to match the size. So this is, a, this is a little bit finicky. It doesn't actually break the pipes either. So in your ribbon, we can break the pipe, say right there. Rotate our T with these grips. There should be a little rotation one, but it doesn't. Oh, so the, that pipe is connected. We'll just erase that pipe. There, there's our rotation grip. And if you start clicking these, the rotation works backwards. Turn on polar tracking or ortho, whatever you want. We're going to get that straight. Try and straight north. And then if you snap to the pipes, I probably have to disconnect it. I can then snap this one to here. And I can snap this one to there. You would obviously come in here and make sure these are all tangent and they're 90 degrees and everything works out, uh, perfectly. I'm going to draw a pipe from here to here. And it's just connecting our parts. Obviously, I've done it just a little bit quick because these are really finicky. Uh, the way they work. And right now this is connected to this. However, if we check our fitting properties, oh, it's not going to tell us there's a problem. And also our deflection is 90 degrees. So that is because our pipe is down to zero. So how do we go about fixing that? 
if we look over at our profile views, we can start fixing it with our profile. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to select all the fittings and a, and water pipes that are running along this road. And I'm going to right click, draw parts and profile view. I'm going to add them to my main road. And that is where we're going to see it drop massively. Now, if I select these, my ribbon should change to where I could do a design check, a depth check, or if I can find where they moved it, uh, fitting properties, edit, sorry, edit network, profile layout tools. So under edit network, profile layout tools, I want to follow a surface. Civil 3D is gonna select, tell me to select the next pressure part in profile. If I click on this one here, it selects the whole run in that profile view. And I'll hit enter. Civil 3D asked me for a depth below surface. I'm gonna type three meters below and hit enter. We'll let Civil 3D do its thinking. It shrunk my profile back down. And if we look at our pipes now, that one no longer goes down to zero. We now have a break. And if I measure this distance, it should say six meters based on what we typed in that previous document. So six meters. Civil 3D follows that surface with your pipe. So this pipe will be exactly three meters underground and we can modify things. I can select these objects. I can move these objects up and down. If we have an interference with one of our lines, a storm line or a sanitary line, so right here, going into the page, this, this sanitary pipe is probably intersecting with my other, with the water pipe here. If object viewer doesn't crash, I can't even select the sanitary pipe there. So you can check, but the, the strong point of pressure networks here is we can grab the pieces and we can adjust them. So we can come down and around that sanitary line. We can make these so there's no crazy bends, no crazy angles or deflection angles here. And we can modify this water line. Every six meters, we will be able to drag one of these grips and do that. And usually it's not this slow of why it's lagging, but it's probably because I have the 3D view going on over here. So we can deflect that down and under our sanitary or storm line or whatever we need to do to ensure there's no interferences between the pipes. So again, the previous two videos were going over the underground utilities on how to figure it out, uh, how to put in the sanitary, how to put in the storm, how to put in the water and design this, ensuring the water is three meters below ensuring all our fire hydrants are tied in. And I don't think I tied that one and I just placed it in. However, make sure you have all the parts built and in your drawing so you don't need them when you go to do it.